Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Be Creative Art Journal from Bee Paper Company. Bee Paper is a US company that specifically designs most of their products specifically for artists. They cover a wide range of mediums from watercolor to color pencils, mixed media, marker art, and sketching. And I specifically, of course, am going to be looking at the watercolor aspects of this journal today. Since this is a watercolor channel, I thought that would be the most fitting. And this is the Be Creative 8 by 8 inch watercolor art journal. This was a gift from our beautiful friend Tiffany, who lives in Southern California, who I met earlier last year. She was very sweet and gave this to me for my birthday, and I was really, really excited to learn more about it. This specific journal from them, their watercolor art journal, has 140 pound, get ready for it, cotton paper. So we're not dealing with a wood pulp or cellulose paper here. We do have a cotton paper, which I was so excited to hear about. They market it as being suitable for pen, pencil, charcoal, pastels, watercolor, and acrylic. The art journal has a recycled chipboard cover and it's unfinished and their website actually specifically mentions that you can personalize it with anything that you would like to from acrylics to drawing with like metallic markers or even coating it with stickers, which I actually did before I read that on their website. So luckily I intuitively went for what they had intended and that is that you can personalize these journals, which is a lot of fun. The stickers that you saw at the beginning of this video were ones from my friends that I've met at Artist Alley, so be sure to head on over to their Instagram and check them out. Some other features that this journal has is that it has double wire binding so that you have a flat surface when you are painting and the pages are micro perforated so that they're easier to tear out if you decide if you paint something that you decide that you want to go ahead and put on display later. It's not uh, too difficult to remove from the journal itself. That being said, the pages in this book are single sided they have smooth backsides. So I personally don't care to paint on surfaces like that. And also the pages seem to rub together quite a bit when you're traveling and all the paintings that I've done so far have rubbed off in some way on the back side of the painting before it. So that is something to consider when you are using this book. It has 30 pages, so again, if you're not using the backsides, that is 30 pages for your own use. And yeah, I think that is about it for all of the specs on this particular paper. I know this video is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing on my channel in terms of the format, but I promise the reasons are threefold. So the first reason and most timely and topically is that on Friday, we are going to have our top five favorite series cover my favorite journals. Uh, this book will be in that video. And so I didn't want to go ahead and cover a bunch of technical specs here. And then in two days time, rehash all of those when comparing them to other journals. So I thought I would go ahead and show you something a little bit different. The second reason is pretty personal, and that is that one of my goals in 2018 is to share more of my personal artwork with you all. I love making my technical reviews. Uh, you all know I'm a total nerd about those types of things, but I also am first and foremost an artist, and I feel like I got a little bit far away from that on my channel in 2017, and this year I really wanted to kind of dial back and balance my life a little bit more, both as a reviewer uh, and as an artist. So I hope that you like seeing this type of stuff. Let me know in the comments below. The third reason is that this paper is really interesting and I wanted to be able to show you that in action versus just on test because I feel like testing this paper is very different than actually painting on it. And the best way for me to show you how that works is by showing you this video. So given everything, I wanted to love this journal so much. Tiffany, first and foremost, got it for me for my birthday, and it was so sweet of her to do so. And of course, I really, really wanted to love it to be able to tell her that as well. And uh, additionally, I also have used Bee Paper products before. I really like their 90 pound um, sheets that you can buy on Amazon in the six by nine size, and they're really convenient for um, just practice sketching and things like that. So I'm never too afraid afraid to, you know, jot down an idea or something on them or test out colors because they're not a huge investment. Um, but there's just something about this notebook that it's 
it's hard to put a finger to. It just doesn't handle the way I like my watercolor paper to handle. At the beginning of this video, I showed you some paintings that I have done in this already. There aren't too many of them, but I do have the Vulture, which is a real live time tutorial over on Patreon if you wanted to see that in more detail. Um, it's using the Holbein paints in the bead notebook for the first time, and I'm kind of talking through my life thoughts on it. And then I did a series of animal eyes over the course of a couple of weeks. I, did, I started them here um, when I was doing some practice work and then I ended up taking it with me while I was traveling and adding to it and really filling up that page. While I was traveling especially and not using the paints that I'm used to, plus Holbein is not a brand that I am used to using a whole lot either, I thought maybe it's just these aren't the paints that I'm used to using, maybe they just handle differently, and that is why for this painting I went back to my original palette, the one that I very first set up with my Daniel Smith paints uh, years ago, and I wanted to use those materials in this notebook so that I would really know what I was up against. So throughout this video, you're going to be noticing that I am slowing down the footage to real time and then speeding it up to do a little bit of time lapse features. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because if I showed you this video, we'd be here forever. And um, while I know a lot of you do like being able to watch me in real time, that isn't exactly the format that works best on YouTube, which is why I have all my Patreon tutorials where you can see me painting in live time. Um, I did want to slow down for certain sections because they really show off some of of the challenges, I'll use the word challenges, that I had with this paper. While I still wanted to show you the rest of the process and some other general things, and that's when I sped up the footage. Hopefully that makes some sense. Wow, I can really drone on, can't I? I hope that information was useful, but let's finally talk about the painting that you are watching in this video. I am currently using two different water brushes. I do this technique quite often where I have one brush loaded with the color that I'm using, and then I use the other one so that I can soften off my edges and go back and forth. I do this with regular brushes too, not just water brushes, but this way I'm not wasting a bunch of extra pigment by putting down concentrated color, rinsing my brush with water, softening it off, and then repeating the process back and forth. This way I just have the two brushes in my hand and I can go back and forth a lot more fluidly. One of the things that you might be noticing while you are watching me paint this is that this paper really grabs on to paint. And um, for that reason, I don't believe it is heavily sized. Um, when sizing is added to a paper, water kind of sits on top of it for a little bit longer, allows the paints to be moved around and also creates some more vibrancy. This paper soaks up even the non-staining colors. So I understand if Thalo Turquoise is gonna stain, it's gonna stain, it's a staining color, but I'm using Burnt Umber as the brown here. This is a very lifting color and both on on top of the greens and on just the plain paper, this paint just will not move once it is down on the drawing, the painting itself. You're gonna see that more close up in just a few moments when we move over to the branch so that you can really get an in-depth look at how hard I had to scrub to try and move things around. But the long and short of it is just that if you're going to be putting a stroke down on this page, just be confident enough in that stroke that it is going to stay there because you're not really going to be able to move it around all that much. I really like to be able to work with my paints to have them flow a bit more. I do use Arches watercolor paper and um, it is a cotton paper similar to this one, but I do feel like you have a little bit more leniency with how much time you have to move around the paints. I also don't mind working on wood pulp paper. I do prefer cotton paper, but I really like sometimes having the fluidness of a wood pulp paper that lets kind of things just float around and be pretty and flowy. And I think that I've gotten really used to that, especially in my journals, because a lot of them do have wood or cellulose paper in them. So having to go from that mindset to this other mindset mindset of once it's on the paper, it's just stuck there. And I've actually had to adjust my techniques to kind of cope for that. You're going to see here one more time me just showing you the uh, the strength of the grasp of this paper. So I put down that uh, tealish color and you can see the outlines of where it really grasped on and isn't going to move. To compensate for that, I put layers of the lighter green over the top of it to try and make that edge less noticeable. And I did that constantly throughout this painting. 
And here on the far side of the paper, I'm trying to show you how hard I'm trying to scrub to just soften the edge on this wash here. I don't even want to lift it. I just want to make that edge not so hard and crisp. And this is a synthetic water brush. It uh, holds up pretty well. It's pretty stiff. And for most paints and paper situations, it does a fairly good job of lifting. So I was a little surprised that I couldn't get it to wiggle at all. I do have one more note for you on that coping technique with putting down washes in just a few moments, but I did want to first just mention the little details here. So I'm putting down some eyes and the nose and some shadows. And I did want to mention that even though this paper really grabs onto paint like a um, lightly or no sized paper would, it didn't have the feathering that I would expect to accompany that. So when a paper isn't heavily sized, uh, you would expect more of a feathering edge onto some of your washes and that didn't really happen here. So here is where I wanted to tell you the last tip for trying to cope with this different style. And it took me until the end to kind of figure it out. But when I was putting in this dark background uh, with a neutral tint, when I put the layer of paint down here and then try and soften that off to do a really flowy background like I do for almost all of my paintings, I couldn't like the line was just there and it was really hard and it wouldn't budge. So what I did instead is I took my water brush and I wet all of the paper next to it and as far out as I wanted it to flow. And I kind of backwards, uh, engineered how I wanted to get this done. So I put in all the water first and then went in with the paint and let it flow into the water. Now this might not be revolutionary for many of you if you are used to painting wet on wet, but my favorite technique is putting the wet paint on dry paper and then feathering off with a wet clean brush. So you're going to see here as I'm working on the background, I have switched that technique to put the water down first and then add the dark paint so that I don't have harsh lines on my background. So if nothing else, I hope that that little tip there was helpful if you are working on different types of paper and want to try some different strategies for working around whichever one um, isn't in your comfort zone, uh, maybe that was able to help you out. So kind of to wrap things up and summarize here, this isn't my favorite paper, even though I was really, really hoping I would absolutely love this, but it's also not my least favorite paper. Um, I was able to learn some coping techniques to deal with the challenges that this paper presented to me. And overall, I mean, I can only thank it, right? Like I learned something new. I learned how to do my backgrounds in a different way. And I learned how to cope with a paper that really wanted to give me a run for my money. So that is pretty much going to do it for the review on the notebook. But if you want to hang around for just another minute where you're going to be finishing up the chameleon here and you can see how cute he turned out, I am finishing off some details with a white Uniball Signo gel pen. Now I do apologize. I did not know that my hand was blocking basically this entire process. Now I know for next time I need to angle my camera differently. I have to hold the gel pen at a very specific angle so that I can get the ink to flow out and that was not conducive with me filming. So ta-da, it's done. We skipped straight forward to the end of the process. I am going to be adding just a few more little touches to this painting. At the end of a painting, I always kind of sit back and look at my values and my colors and see if there's any adjusting that I want to do through glazing. And that is going to be it. So I hope that you enjoyed both the review on the B paper art journal, as well as seeing this little process video on the chameleon. I felt a little bit bad that he and the rest of the reptiles got left out of the animal artists collective when we did tropical rainforest. So I wanted to represent a little bit here. If you did miss the video on the Animal Artist Collective and would like to see me painting a jaguar and learning a little bit more about the conservation efforts, I'll put a link up in the upper hand corner. Let me know in the comments below how you like the format of this video and also if you have used the Bee Paper art journal and what you think of it and um, if you like the way that it hangs onto your paint for you and maybe it makes glazing easier for you if you don't want it to move around. But uh, in any case, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing and of course to my wonderful patrons who keep this channel afloat. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy painting!